Hi, welcome to Date Night. I'm Will. And I'm Amy. And we've been married for 13 years. 13 long years. Yeah, and after all those long years, we felt like we needed some adventure in our marriage. So every couple of weeks, we send our kids out of the house to the sitter's house. And we go upstairs to the playroom. Yep, and we clear off the table. And we explore a whole new world together. Just the two of us. And me, your best buddy and longest role-playing companion. Yep, and Mike. And me, your favoritest nephew. And our nephew. Your favoritest nephew. Our favoritest nephew, Sam. And, of course, a mysterious force from beyond the veil, also known as your half-niece-in-law, Eva. Yeah, and our whatever Eva is to us. <laughs> <laughs> and we play... Dungeons and Dragons. All right, so the next thing you see is the face of Kip with a bloody forehead smacking you on the side of your face. <laughs> saying, hey, Dard, you got any... You got any any healing left? I've got a cure wounds. He basically... And then I got one healing potion left. Okay. He says, I think... And you don't have your healing potions with you, probably. Right, that's right. I gave all my gear away. So I got one cure wounds. He says, you've been out. You've been out about an hour. I don't think anybody else is here. You have one hit point, by the way, if you're oh. stable for an hour. Sweet. Um, but I don't want to hang around too much longer. I'm not feeling so great. Neither do I. Uh... I've been, in this hour, I've been looking through the the books here a little bit. Uh, I'm sort of trying to make sure that you were stable. But, uh, for being people who are agents of chaos, they seem to keep pretty good books. <laughs> uh, all I can sort of find is that, according to these, they were buying enough food to feed an army. But what's weird is it's almost entirely fish and seagrass. An army of yeah. shark people. I and all of a sudden know. the realization dawns on Dern because I think I know where you're going with this. And he's like the eyes go real wide and he just says Crap, I forgot what they're called. What's the, the Cthulhu equivalent in D&D? The Mind Flayers? Or? I don't know. The the Squid People. Yeah, Mind yeah. Flayers. Mind Flayers! Uh, I hope not. Um, but let's uh, let's look around and see if we can get the hell out of here. Okay. Uh, I want to check Book Lady real quick for, uh, for anything. Okay, she is a pile of dust, actually, at this point. <laughs> So, oh no. yeah, that happened when oh. she was uh, pretty bad off, at least when you went under. Um, and I just kind of pushed her over, and she turned to dust. Not even like her robes or anything are left, or no. Okay, what about Warhammer? Yes. Can I have that basically as back as my Warhammer? That's okay. it's basically the same. I'm gonna drop the mace and pick up the Warhammer. Okay. And then. All, that's all he had, no shield or anything like that? He had a... He had a... Sh he had a shield. It wouldn't be any better than the one I've got? No. no? Okay. Uh, anything on the moose? Moose he, man? He had a big two-handed axe, and that was it for him. Yeah, it's not my style. Okay. Oh, and um, there was a short bow on the dwarf skeleton. No, let's just roll. Okay. Um, do you want to check out anything else in the room? Kip's, before you go? Kip's pretty much been through the room, hasn't he? Um, I guess just a quick perception check. Okay. 15. 
Uh, it doesn't look like Kip has done too much with the maps. It looks like he's mostly been looking through the books. Okay, uh, can I roll some of them up and, like, shove them in my pocket or something? Yeah. Okay. Yeah, so you could pick up a, the maps that look like they have a lot of writing on them or whatever. Sure. Okay, so you've got some maps right now. Maps. When you go back into the hall, you see it has... Uh, the stairway branching off of it, and it looks like it's got four other uh, rooms. So there's two that were sort of before the room that you went into, and then the, uh, on the left, and then there's another room that was on the right that might be bigger. Can I just kind of duck my head into... Yeah. To, okay. Um, the first one, roll a d4. D4... Three. It looks like some sort of uh, kitchen and mess hall with a stove and dishes and stuff in it. Plus, looks like maybe some storage. Uh, let's check the storage for like healing items or something that can kind of help. Okay, roll a d6. Four. Okay, you find some, uh, what looks like it could be a potion, a healing potion. Kip, do you want to try this? Uh... Okay. I mean, are, are you feeling healthy, or...? Um, I'm probably a little bit healthier than you. All right, I'll try it then. All right, roll, uh, d4. Two. So four, take four healing. That's, uh, other than some supplies in terms of, like, food and knives, meat, potatoes, ale, um, some pots, that's about what's in that. Okay, let's check another It's kind of like a pantry. Okay. Um, are you going to try and check? I'll, I'll just pick one instead of rolling for them. Okay. Uh, the next one you look in looks like a barracks. This was across the hall. This is the largest room. It basically takes up one whole side. It's got like 25 or so bunks in it with foot lockers. It's got a fireplace, a few chairs, some chamber pots. There's a tapestry hanging up on the wall with, like, a tarasque um, on it. Uh, okay. The only thing it. I've ever heard tarasque from is from StarCraft. Okay. It was a type of ultralisk. What's a tarasque? Yeah, it's basically like an ultralisk. Oh, okay. Rock on. It's huge. I've got a general idea. Giant. Okay. Monster type creature with, like, a thick, scaly exterior. Are the so. foot lockers, are they locked? The, um, looks like there's a number of them that would be open. Let's go check some of those. All right, so there are some yellow robes, some common clothes, things like daggers and candles. There's a healer's kit, um, and roll a d100. That's these two, right? Yep. Okay. Two ten-sided guys. To 18. I had a 10 and an 8. Okay. Okay, you find a potion of healing. Hey, sweet. All right, you want to keep looking around? Yeah, last room. There's two more rooms. Oh, okay. Um, but you could ch it's up to you if you want to check them all. Uh, the next one looks like an ancient torture chamber. Uh, maybe this used to be an actual dungeon before the modern prison was built on top. This looks much older than sort of the things up there. It has, like, a rack in the middle of it, a counter with some drawers, uh, recessed areas in the floor for blood to run into, etc. Basically a nice little place. Let's check the drawers really quick, but I don't want to be in here for long. Okay, roll a d100 for me again. Okay. 85. Ooh. Now that I should have left that open. I don't have a gnome here. I have to do all the thievery myself. Yes. 85. Uh, you find... Actually, I need you to roll a d4. 4. Nice. Um, and then... I need you to roll d100. I haven't used these tables much. 45. Okay, roll another D100. 
68. Okay, again. Uh, 58. Okay, and one more. 57. Okay, you've got a potion of heroism. So you found a little cache of, of basically potions. It actually wasn't in the drawers. It was just sitting on the top in like a little uh, apothecary shelf. Mm -hmm. So you have a potion of heroism, a potion of invulnerability. Okay. A potion of frost giant strength. And a spell scroll. And you could roll an arcana check if you want to try to figure out what the spell scroll is. Yeah, sure. Twelve. Okay. It is a scroll of the spell Pass Wall. That was a good duck. Yeah. Mm. Pass Wall. One action, range 30 feet, lasts an hour. A passage appears at a point of your choice that you can see on a wooden, plaster, or stone surface, such as a wall, ceiling, or floor within range, and lasts for the duration. You choose the opening's dimensions. Up to 5 feet wide, 8 feet tall, 20 feet deep. The passage creates no instability in the structure surrounding it. Cool. Okie dokie. Neat. Um, do you want to look in the last room? Yeah. Okay, the last room looks like it's some sort of a lounge. It has chairs, a table, there's some dice sitting on the table. Uh, there's a bookshelf. There's a... Uh, ram horn with looks like it has like a silver band on it on the wall, and that's about it in this room. I want to roll the dice. <laughs> you want to roll the dice? I want to roll the dice. Okay, there's six sided dice on there, so if you want to roll a six sided die, four actually, it's a six. Oh, okay. <laughs> well, that was unexpected. <laughs> <laughs> you can roll it again. No, I'm okay. Okay. Uh, I'm going to take that horn. <laughs> Just want to grab the horn? Yeah, take the horn. All right. Um, this is called Thunderhorn. Oh, oh, I'm glad I took the horn. All right. And uh, you can roll an arcana check if you'd like. I'm going to roll arcana on Thunderhorn. Three. It's a Thunderhorn. Thunder <laughs> <laughs> I don't know exactly what it does. But it's Thunderhorn. Because that's what it says on it. I just like it. <laughs> this is my new favorite thing. Okay. Strapping it to my back. All right. Thunderhorn it is. All right. So what's the plan now? You've explored all of these rooms. Let's get out of here. Okay. You want to head back up? Yeah, head back up. All right. So you head back up the stairs and you end up at the cell in the top and it's closed now. The wall or the cell? The cell. Oh. You can get back to the cell but the cell is closed. That's not going to do me any good. I don't want to be in a cell. Is there the is there a wall to the outside? The wall this cell is in the corner of the jail. So there was basically when you went into the cell itself, uh -huh. this is where you were. Uh -huh. Say this is the jail. This is where you were. But the walls were thick. So when you went into the room in it's the like corner false, of the cell, wall. there was a false wall. And then um, you gather that it would be based on kind of what you saw through the windows, an exterior wall along the stairwell that you went down. Okay. Uh, I guess Balaam locked us back in here. Well, try the door, see... <clears throat> try the door a lot, see if it is in fact locked. Uh, all right. Kip's gonna try to be sneaky. 
So Kip sneaks over to the door and goes to push on it, and it doesn't doesn't move, and he sneaks back did, into the. Did you? Oh, I was going to ask if you saw anything while he was. Uh, you want me to take a peek down the hall? Hey, I didn't see anybody when I was there. Okay, he sneaks back over and looks down the hallway. I don't see anybody in the hall. Okay. Can we try to pick it? Uh, you could try. Um, do you have anything you think you might be able to use? You don't have picks, so you would. Well, I'd have I'd have Carl's body right there, right? Cause that, that's where we killed him. No, you killed him out in the hallway. Oh. So he's out in the hall. Oh. Like a few cells down over where the gnomes were. Darn. I could go back down, grab a dwarf bone, and try to... <laughs> you could look around for some, some stuff down yeah, there. Yeah, let's look around for... Uh, maybe in, in the torture chamber there'd be a... Yeah. A pick-like object. Yeah, so when you were in there looking through the drawers, you would have seen some things that were, like, sharp and made of metal. Let's go grab some of those. So you can grab those, and I'll let you roll... Um, a dexterity check. Dice be good to me. Dice were not good to me. It's a six. No, so you try to fumble around inside the lock, but you don't have any success. You want to have a try, lad? Uh, uh, with those, I, I guess I could give it a shot. So Kip sticks the tools into the lock, and you hear it <laughs> open up. Yay! Yeah, well, you know. Good job, lad. I guess I'm good for something once in a while. All right. Let's uh, see if we can get out. All right. So you're going to try and do what? Our, so there's just a hallway, right? Yeah. Go down the end of the hallway. So when you came in, I guess we didn't really talk about this, you came in through that long hallway, uh-huh. and there was kind of a, a foyer area in the front uh-huh. where you would have entered through originally. Um, there was a guard there when you came in, so I'll just give you that. That there could still be one there. Okay. Sneakily, sneak, sneakily. Is that a word? Sneakily. Sneakily. Stealthily. Yeah. S- st- sneakily sneak up to the the foyer. Okay. Um. Yeah. Kip basically makes a. I don't know what he does, <laughs> but Kip kind of crashes into the cell door when he's closing it behind him. Oh, sorry. And you see uh, a person from in that foyer just kind of walk and look down the hall. And he says, or roll a perception check. Three. Okay. This is... Thunder whore. <laughs> Roll initiative. Eight. Okay, you're first. So this guy's spotted you. It's up to you what you want to do. Dash. In his direction. Yeah, right, right at him. Okay. Um, you could make it there on this turn. You won't be able to make the attack because Dash uses your... Could I make um, it there without the dash? Uh, no, he's, it's probably 40, 50 feet okay. long in the hall. Dash. Okay, so you're going to dash over I to I don't this want guy. him to shut a door on me. All right. I don't know if there is a door, but I don't want What's him to. What's your AC? 12. Before you go dashing off, um, Kip's going to touch you and your skin turns to bark. And your AC is 16 right now. And as you're running down the hall uh, toward this figure in the doorway, you see... As you get closer, that is Balaam, and he levels that uh, lightning wand at you. And that's a 15. Miss! Okay. So, it basically goes toward you, and kind of hits against that bark skin, and some of it you watch go splintering off like a tree that got hit by lightning, but it doesn't hurt you. And it's your turn. Okay. Um, I'm going to use my, my last slot for Thunderous. Okay. Nineteen. That hits. And then eight for my weapon damage. That's a full eight. So eight plus five, thirteen. Plus five. Plus five. Uh, 
plus one, so another six. All right, you blast Balaam all the way across the foyer, and he smacks into the back wall of the room with that and just slumps down to the ground unconscious. Any sounds or... Well, I guess I should roll for that. Well, you had a really big thunderous might, so there was a big noise. Any any sounds other than ringing? (laughs) Yeah, you can roll a perception for hearing. Fourteen. It seems like... There's a sort of ruckus going on behind you with, from in the people in the cells. Yeah. All right. I want to rifle through Balaam's pockets for a key or okay. basically find what I can find. Yeah. Kip comes up uh, beside you and is basically watching the door that leads to the outside mm-hmm. while you're doing that. You find Balaam does have a set of keys. Um, he's got the wand. He's got a leather jacket. Um that he was wearing, and a uh, sheriff's badge. That's about it. Take the wand and the sheriff's badge, give the keys to Kip, and tell him to start opening up cells. Oh, all right. Um, so this wand uh, is called just called lightning wand. It has three charges, and it gains a charge uh, every time at dawn. It, it has a maximum of three charges, okay. I should say. It's time to get the, the notepad out because I'm running out of scribble room on my... Yeah. Right now this thing is actually discharged. But it has a maximum of three charges. You said it charges one tick every hour, you said? At one charge oh, dawn. every dawn. It holds max three. It requires an action, has a range of 60 feet. 60, not 6. It uses your intelligence modifier as a ranged attack. So I would do nothing. Well, it uses that to see if you hit. Oh. So you would be plus 0 to hit. Oh, okay. But you could still roll. And if it hits, it does 1d12 lightning damage. If you expend the last charge, you have to roll a d10, and on a 1, the wand self-destructs. Fan just came on, but it's still... Is it still doing stuff? It looks like it's still doing stuff. Okay. So, wait, so it's discharged right now. I have to roll to see if it's... No, whenever you have it, if you let it discharge, you use it the last charge it has. You have to roll a d10. And if it's a 1, the wand is destroyed. Wand go boom. Okay. While you're doing that, Kip is... You want me to open them all? Unless you get a bad feeling about someone, I... All right. So Kip spends some time opening up some cells. The way the sheriff made it sound, it sounded like the innocent people stay in jail while the really guilty ones get turned into cultists. So Kip runs around and starts opening the cells, and people start filtering out into the hallway like they're not exactly sure where they should go. Go! Okay, so you see him start streaming out uh, past you and through the door as Kip's letting him out. And after he finishes opening up all the cells, he says, All right, um, you want to get out of here? Aye. Okay. And as you get out of the door, you watch Kip transform into a horse and go, and kind of motion for you to hop on. Um, I'm a dwarf. Do you have anything more Shetland (laughs) pony-sized? He's just kind of rubbing his uh, hooves on the ground. All right, let me find a box. (laughs) So he kind of sidles up next to a crate outside or next to the porch where you have a little height advantage. Awkwardly shimmy onto Kip's back. All right, so the scene outside when you get out of the prison is that um, in the distance, you can see a gallows set up, and you see that there's a big crowd around um, that gallows. And other than that, it looks like 
kind of the rest of the area you could see is pretty well open. Let's go somewhere other than to the gallows. Okay. So I guess turn Kip, because Amy was hiding out closer to the, the sex district, right? Yeah, that's directly north of the prison, which is sort of where those gallows are. Let, let's arranged. go the long way around. Okay, so you're going to kind of duck around yeah, the prison? Let's, yeah, let's hook right and come around. All right, well, we're going to have to get Amy, I think, to wrap this up. Okay. So let me see if she's around downstairs or if she went outside. While I have you, faithful listeners, I would just like to say, as a paladin, if you have the opportunity to use Lay on Hands, use the Lay on Hands. I got super lucky with some of those rolls. I should have died much sooner in the fight, because I was down to three health, and I thought to myself, you know what? No, I can take it. And then she barely missed on that giant hand darkness spell. I should have been just completely down for the count. So take it from Dern Hammerstone. Use the lay on hands early and often. This public service announcement brought to you by the Council of Tiny Dwarf People. You know what? Thinking further on that, I probably shouldn't say Tiny Dwarf People. This message brought to you by the Council of Dwarf Paladins. Much better. Scratch that other one. I have a thunder horn, a thunder horn, a thunder horn. I don't know what it does, but I have a thunder horn. And I have a lightning wand, a lightning wand, a lightning wand. I have a lightning wand, but also a thunder horn. My bad improvising after Mike passed all his wisdom and intelligence checks and surprised me. <laughs> Hi! Hi! I'm here! I sang a song while you guys were downstairs. I heard you oh, guys good. bust out laughing. Yeah, I don't remember what that was about. Neither do oh, I. Thunderhorn! A thunderhorn. <laughs> all right. I have a Thunderhorn. I had to roll an arcana check to see if I knew what it did. I rolled a three, so I have a Thunderhorn. The first thing I need... To, do you have some dice? I'm going to go back to Kira really quick. I do stuff is somewhere. Out of order. I don't know if it would help, but I have a thunder horn. <laughs> ah, I found my dice in my magical carrying pack since my friend hasn't gotten them to me. Sophie, I'm looking at you. Because she has them in the medical carrying pack, because if she has to heal someone, she has to know whether or not she succeeds. Alright, I got my dice. Last I knew, I was sitting outside the prison, and it was the middle of the night. Yeah. And I think you told me that Kalman had gone off, and I don't remember, because that was two weeks ago. Yeah, you sent Kalman uh, off. He went to turn the fish north and south. He thought maybe that would cause more of a ruckus. <laughs> so Kalman's off in the fish market. I did not think that that would cause more of a ruckus. But Kalman did. Yes. <laughs> he interpreted it to mean that, yeah. It'll be chaos. So you've been waiting kind of outside the prison and sort of dodging people who are on patrol throughout the night. You sort of, you got a room for a while at the hot springs place mm -hmm. so that you could keep an eye on things and have a place to go. When the morning came, you started to see a crowd gather outside the prison, turning more and more mob-like as the morning went on. And eventually, you saw a couple of guards leave from the prison with two uh, hooded individuals of diminutive size start walking toward the gallows. And I need you to make a perception check. I'm trying to rem remember what... What, what? They actually picked the... Oh, mm. hold on. Mm. Mm. <laughs> uh, sorry, I'm trying to remember perception. Okay, there it is. 
There's a crowd, and I see two diminutive people walking towards the gallows. Okay, so you see that, and you see them get put up onto the gallows, and somebody steps up front and basically tries to quiet the crowd down, one of the guards, and he says, I know all of you are upset about all the things that have happened, but we will make certain that justice is served. We had an incident at the prison where these two almost got away from us, but we've got it under control now. We're sorry it took so long. We're going to go ahead and and take care of this in just a minute. Okay. Um, while you're there in the crowd, Kira, you overhear people talking about, obviously, wanting justice. Um, they are talking about the chaos that's going on in the financial district in particular, how they're even having trouble finding any backup copies of some of the documents that have been destroyed. You hear people talking about the temple in the Traveler's District and saying, did anybody even really use that temple? Like, I'm not really sure, but it was still not so great that they burned it down because think about all the ashes in the Traveler's District. Um... Then you also hear that, on the other hand, the fish market looks the best it has ever looked. <laughs> There's been a nice young man there in a striking hat who said, I've been fish fatching the mish! And uh, he's been alternating them in perfect, uh, <laughs> perfect east-west or north-south <laughs> directions. Why would they even mention this at the gallery? <laughs> At least some part of the town is looking so, spiffy. So, like, all of our financial and economic future is looking very grim and completely uncertain, but the fish have never been nicer. <laughs> the fish have never looked nicer. Let's all be fishers. Okay. So uh, that's that's what you see. Uh, and you're there a while, and there's a lot of mulling around in the crowd, and they're sort of trying to get things prepared up on the gallows and rigging up ropes, and I need you to make another perception check. Is one fat and the other skinny, no offense, or a dwarf? <laughs> I need new dice. I rolled a one. Yeah, it's, it's misty out, and even now it's hard to see in the crowd or anything. Now have you know I'm svelte. <laughs> For a dwarf. For a dwarf. I'm very svelte. But I'm a half elf. I'm still svelte. Half human, so to me you're fine. Oh, we all look alike. I see how it is. <laughs> you're so stout. That's kind of the situation right now, Kira. Sneak up a little bit closer, see if one may be uh, svelte. Yeah, there you go. Okay. And the other is not so svelte. All right, so now they've got their ropes uh, all rigged up, and they see the couple of individuals there uh, with their hands tied. They start shuffling them toward the middle of the gallows where the little trap doors are. So I need you to roll your perception check that you're close. It's just really hard to tell. Um, I need I my elves had good eyes. I need you to make. Uh, I've been up all night. <laughs> I need you to make a, a roll, and I'll add the necessary modifiers. <laughs> okay. Necessary modifiers of yeah uh, of on two. A two. All right, so I'll come back to what's going on from your point of view in a little bit, Darren. I'm going to stick with Kira for now. I'm assuming that he makes it out alive, but I'm my character doesn't know that, so I'm freaking out. Can I get any closer? You're pretty close to the gallows right now. You've <laughs> fished your way up through the uh, uh, crowd, and uh, Kalman actually sidles up right next to you in the crowd, and he goes, Hey! Here we are! I turn those fish north and south. They're going to be coming for me any time. You see those two people? Do we know them? What do you think? <laughs> Please tell me he rolled good. I'm I don't know who they are. <clears throat> they don't look familiar. They got, I, they got hoods on over their faces. Why are they being funny? <laughs> well, he's too pure for this world. <laughs> Why are they putting those ropes around their necks? <laughs> are they people that you don't recognize? 
or that you recognize are people that we don't know. <laughs> I'm somehow more worried about Calvin than I am about the, about the, <laughs> the two figures about to be hanged. <laughs> I'm like, oh. no, sweet prince, turn away. <laughs> what? <laughs> <laughs> I'm trying to figure out how to word it. Are they people that he recognizes or not? Not that he recognizes them, but he can You're tell enough. Have to talk to him. <laughs> Calman, are you sure that these are not Dern and Kip? No. They're gnomes. Okay. All right. From your perspective, Dern, as you come around the side of the prison, with your perception check, you don't spot Hira or Calman or anybody in the crowd, but you do see that there are two individuals on the gallows. And as you recall, um, trying to think about who was streaming and sneaking out of the prison when you left... You don't remember seeing those two gnomes that were in there. Um, you're sitting on Kip's back right now. Uh, Wait. <laughs> is this like Just the, go with the last. Is this like the panther riding the gorilla again? <laughs> I don't know. Does it feel like that? <laughs> I kind of like it. <laughs> um, and you can see that they're prepping these uh, individuals. And you see there's a big throng of people here. Most of the people who left the prison have sort of went uh, to the south, the ones who streamed out in front of you. So, Kalman, these are definitely not a halfling and a dwarf. No, they're definitely gnomes. Look at their feet. <laughs> okay, I look at their feet and am I seeing? Roll a perception check. <laughs> their feet. I need Allie for this one. Nine? You're not sure if they're gnome feet, but none of them look like halfling feet. Okay. <laughs> Kit, we kind of let those two gnomes... Take the rope for what we've done. Mm. <laughs> Just kind of, I guess, try to ride towards the... I want to blow the thunder horn. <laughs> okay. <laughs> I don't know what it does yet. Okay. This is probably a really bad idea. You blow the thunder horn... And you feel like a big wave of thunderous force shoot out in front of you, but nobody's in that particular area. But it makes a huge noise, just like your thunder wave kind of does, which draws, obviously, the attention of everybody in the crowd and up on the platform as you're riding through this section between the prison and the sex district on your druid horse, blowing your thunder horn. (laughs) Can't we just call it the red light district? Well, they call it the whore's legs because of the two roads in there that are split wide apart at the north of the city. Am I within shouting distance, approximately? Uh, you're probably 200 feet out from the crowd, so, yeah, mm-hmm. and Just sort of... kind of yell, no, that's not them, they went that away, and point towards the sex district. <laughs> okay. Um, roll a deception check. It's a nine. Mob mentality modifier? <laughs> <laughs> Let me check the Dungeon Master's Guide for, for mob, mob mentality, mentality modifiers. That's the uh, MMM. I should get points for my alliteration. <laughs> <laughs> um, I think it causes everybody to pause, at least for the moment, and sort of start looking around at what's going on. And then you do see... Somebody on it, your perception check was very bad again. It's a nine. I hear a voice. That's enough for you to probably tell it's Dern. My, hey. Wonderfully unique accent. Hey, that's Dern. He said sex district. <laughs> <laughs> hey, Calvin, Dern's that way. I told you those weren't his feet. Okay, let's let's try and work through the crowd. Okay. And I start attempting to go that direction. Okay. Calman really smells like fish, by the way. <laughs> so you My start... traveling companion is a dwarf, and I don't think we've actually showered in any 
point in time. So I think I'm we talked sure about that last time, whether smells. or not you guys showered. I think you did finally last time. So is the whole crowd coming at me? So or? you skirt to the edge of the crowd, so mm-hmm. you're on sort of the darn side of the crowd now, Kira. Um, okay. The guy up on the platform starts yelling, and he says, No, no, we've got it under control. These are the individuals who committed the crimes in the financial district and in the traveler's district. Pay no attention to that dwarf with the horn. So people start kind of like turning back toward the uh, platform, and you see... uh, Basically, he motions to another individual who's on the platform who starts reading a form of a last rites. I whisper loudly to one of the other spectators that's there, don't they always say something like that when they're trying to hide what's really actually happening? And I keep going. You can roll a persuasion. (laughs) Mom mentality (laughs) modifier! I got a nat 20. Yes! (laughs) Finally. So, chaos. the individual there who you... uh, (laughs) Whispered that too, says, I, I think, I think the dwarf's right. <laughs> and the whole crowd starts saying, I saw the individuals who committed the crime. Let's see their faces. And the guy's up there. He's, going. And he's going, um, no, no, we, that would be cruel for them to have their hoods removed. We're going to just proceed as normal. Everyone, calm down. Calm down. And they are sort of starting to surge uh, up against the platform. I'm just... I'm leaving. Okay, so you're running off toward the... Toward the Dern? The Dern? Yes. All right, so Kalman's there, running behind you at full speed. Uh, Dern, what are you doing? I see Kira. Yeah, you see Kira and Kalman bust out of the crowd and start running in your direction, flat let's, out. Let's, uh... I can't leave until I know the gnomes are going to be okay. Just kind of sit there for right now. Okay. So you're just kind of rearing up Kip? Yeah. And <laughs> Did Kip get transformed or something? Just go with it, Lass. <laughs> um, I'm really confused running towards you guys. So you see uh, the crowd start surging up onto the platform. Roll a perception check to see what you can see through the crowd. Thirteen. Seven. Okay. Um, (laughs) Sorry, I'm blind. Legolas, what do your elven eyes see? You see (laughs) somebody in the crowd rip the hood off of one of the individuals on the dais. And they say... Isn't it dais? Deus, dice, you can't even see it. What do you care what it's called? <laughs> I can see it. I just can't see it clearly. Um, I forgot my glasses. <laughs> that's a gnome! Okay, now we can leave. Okay. <laughs> so, Kira and Kalman, you get to uh, the horse. Not the horse. The horse. And uh, as you do, you watch the horse kind of motion with its head like to get on. So we're going to have a robot person, a dwarf, <laughs> and, a, and a half-elf ranger on a single horse. That sounds like a really bad joke. <laughs> and then the horse is back, bro. Especially since it's a halfling. Although the Kira doesn't know that. Where's Kip? Just kind of pat the horse. <laughs> what? Just go with it, lass. Come on. I'll sneak out. Okay, Calvin. You do that. Can he really hold both of us? We can try. Okay, I guess I'll... He'll, he'll ask us to get off if we're too much. I guess just roll a simple athletics check. I can roll that. Okay, I, I hop on. I don't even know what my modifier is, but it's an 18. Okay, yeah. it's a 20. I had to find a box. <laughs> <laughs> so You're you short. just... I mean, this doesn't have a saddle on it or anything, so you just pop right up and vault onto the horse, and it starts barreling out toward the... Uh, North east of town, where there's the bridge that leads across the Kokiku River, and you barrel ahead into the wilderness north of Silver's Blessing. Okay. And you find a nice spot after sort of Kip is winded, and he stops beside the road and kind of starts making some motions toward you. 
Like, Lass, I think we need to get off now. Well, once he Jumping stopped, I would assume I, had to, I would slide off once he stopped. All right, after you guys dismount... I'm going to awkwardly try to get off without falling. <laughs> okay. You have to roll I guess I'll let you roll an athletics check. Eight. <laughs> that, plus your strength. Oh, for athletics. 13. Yeah. So you kind of stumble, but you're It's okay. not pretty, but you don't get I, hurt. I get the job done. Yeah, you slide down, and Kip transforms back into uh, his Kip form. <laughs> his halfling form. <sighs> oh, well, we made it. Made it out. <sighs> okay, what happened? Do you know Kip can transform? Guilty as charged, I guess. He was a oh, snake? that's right! He was a snake and then he was a horse? I forgot. He was a druid. He can shapeshift. It was very impressive. Wild a, form. He, he, did good, he did a good job as a snake. Thanks. Uh, it's one of my favorites, really. Couldn't have hit it better with the hammer myself. Oh, I really appreciate that. So, uh, I guess... Uh, Speaking of hammer, for the love of God, it's going to have my armor back. Drop one of the big bags. Yeah, that stuff was heavy. <laughs> uh, you got my stuff? Uh... Yeah, there it is. Thanks. <laughs> Calvin comes up with no, it. No, we pawned that. Oh, man, you pawned my stick? <laughs> I had a stick. No more slaley. <laughs> and I had some disguises. That's, that's all I had, man. I'm going to put all my armor back on. All right. So you're back to your normal gear. Yay. It's getting to be... Late in the evening, uh, what would you like to do? We need to rest. We need to find a good place to camp. I roll a survival check. It'd be better. <laughs> Fourteen. Okay, you find a pretty nice spot off the road a ways that looks like it's pretty much it's down like an incline, so it looks like you couldn't even really see it from the road. So you think it might be a good spot to camp. Okay. All right, so you set up camp. And explain the ordeal to to Kira here. Turns out the sheriff was was a cultist. Oh. So we got put in the slammer, Mm -hmm. and then he snuck us through some little secret passage in the back of the jail, and there was a lady down in the bottom of the jail. She was a tiefling. You know how they are. Then she ended up being, I don't know if she was the leader or what, but they had enough beds for an army. And, and I'm a terrible storyteller. <laughs> yes, you are. Anyways, we killed her. Turns out she was a skeleton. Turned into a pile of dust at the end. And there was another dwarf skeleton and a big moose man skeleton. Yeah, he was. he tried to chop me in half when I was a snake. I didn't appreciate that. I found some potions, let the prisoners free, and, well, here we are. So are we done with our cult quest? I don't know if we're done with it. The cult's not dead, but we killed we, a few of them. We have uh, some ideas about that, though. Oh, we killed I, Carl, too. It was a skeleton. Who's Carl? It was a skeleton. Who's Carl? It was a skeleton. We <laughs> well, killed him. Well, he's not anymore. I. Oh, I'm pretty sure he's still a skeleton, bones. just not a living one. Pretty similar to a skeleton still, just not like a skeleton walking around. So you got a guy named Carl, and you killed him? No, he was a skeleton, a skeleton named Carl. <laughs> <laughs> he was a skeleton, and he's still a skeleton, <laughs> but he's arranged differently now. <laughs> anyway. Should we send Colin back to arrange his bones north and south and east and west, or just... I forgot no. about that, because it wasn't on. No, I think we'll be out eight. But we heard, uh, or I read in their ledgers, I've got some of them here, they were buying a whole lot of food, uh, uh, fish, a lot of fish, and uh, seagrass. Oh, and I have maps. I'll start pulling out maps and arranging them. Can you read this one better? (laughs) Than the the dot map? We'll find out, won't we? (laughs) So there's a bunch of maps of the region uh, or the different regions around Lamoche. The one, one in particular uh, catches your eye. It is the Ephratomi region, which is the one between the Crystal Lakes. That one has a big black hand marked on the section between the Crystal Lakes. But another region map, the Tordar region, 
Their most writing on any of these maps is on the Tordar region, which is to the north of here. On that region, there's a section called the Painted Valley, uh, and there's also... Let me get out the Limoche map that has all the different regions on it. I just stabbed myself in the finger trying to cook dinner because I rolled a one. Trying to see. Well, I'm not doing anything important now. How do I roll? Bad. It's good to get the the bad rolls out of the way. At least the Mm. important ones were good. Maybe I won't be driving the map. Where is it? I don't know. See, if we got sponsors and you could say roll for to prepare your fantasy blue apron meal. What sponsor is this hunt for the map brought to us by? <laughs> if you need to prepare a, a roadside meal, then choose... We're just kidding. Hashtag not sponsored. <laughs> Put them in there. Why did you put them in the Lumosh Underdark? I can read the, fo- the folder from here. Yeah, it wasn't supposed to be. They were supposed to be in oh, the Lumosh. You section. can read that, but you can't tell the difference between a gnome and a dwarf. Well, in the game, I don't have contacts because it's fantasy land, but oh, okay. in real life, I have contacts, and they just she's upgraded a, my prescription. She's a nearsighted half elf ranger. Yeah. So it's actually to the east, uh, northeast of where you are now. There's the. The northern glass lake, which is not where the black hand is. The black hand is nestled between the two southern glass lakes. That's where the symbol is. But there's a bunch of writing uh, in this region. There's a section on the coast that's marked. And then there's another section uh, called the Painted Valley that's marked as well. And in the section on the coast, there's a bit of text... uh, that is in common, and it reads, Every century, the great turtle dragon comes out of the wild eastern sea with a great turtle-born kingdom of Albagula on its back. It rests on the eastern shores, that's circled, and that's what the um, one mark is pointing to on the coast of the region. It says, it rests on the eastern shores for a few months, taking its deep breath and basking in the sun before laying a single egg. None but the turtle-born and aquatic creatures can live in the kingdom, but any race can visit, trade, and worship while the kingdom is at rest. And this is sort of, I say this is writing, but this is like cut out of a book and pasted on the side, I should say. The, The things that are circled point to the map. Um... The turtle-born are masters of crafting in shells and bone, and the dragon-born of the north always come to pay homage to the turtle, bringing it great gifts of fish, meat, seagrass, giant snails, jellyfish, and vegetables. Beyond that, Emperor Takashi, who many claim is immortal and the first wizard of Volyanaya, who others claim is a fae spirit, and others still claim he is just one in a line of men with the same name, a long line of men with the same name, offers rewards without equal to those who win his games. But even greater than material awards is the knowledge that this Takashi has to offer. He knows the history of the world, the news of a thousand centuries, yet he sees it as an outsider and a visitor who notices the slow, gradual changes that we miss by seeing it every day. Okay. Um, I wonder what that egg is for. Then... Uh, there's a section in the Painted Valley in the that same region, the Tordar region, just to the east of the Glass Lake that's marked with uh, like a picture of fumaroles, like geysers and things of that nature. And that's got a big circle on it, and there's a path that sort of leads from where um, Silver's Blessing is up to that Painted Valley. Like, there's one mapped out. 
Um, and that's the most interesting of the maps. You have also got just a map of the uh, Nagamoto region, which is to the south of um, Raven Tree and the Tagata region where you are, but that's not sort of the area that's marked on the Glass Lakes that's marked in the in the other southern region. Um, they have that map, but it doesn't look like they've really marked it up much. That's about it. Out of the maps you grabbed. So you can say that you have maps of the Tordar, Efratomi, and Nagamado regions. I'm just going to slide them over to her because okay. she's the map keeper of the group. So I have those numbered on here if it's easier to write down. You have maps already of Region 2, which is Tagata, and you have Region 6, 7, and 8 now. Which could be helpful if you end up in those regions. So what does it all mean? Two, six, seven, and eight. Yeah. Well, it looks like logistics. Like er area of cultist activity. Yeah. It looks like they're interested in the turtle place, though, with the amount of information they put on that. Aye, which is where we're going to eventually. Maybe we should go there next? Are Maybe. we on the road towards Albagula? Sort of. There was a road from Silver, Sil Silver, the place we're at, to sort of through the Painted Valley up to there. So, right. I imagine we could be on the road. So we'd have to go through the Painted Valley first if we were to go there. I, if you take the way that's marked and has sort of the roads that are listed, yes, you would end up going through the Painted Valley on your way to Albagula. Does Kip have anything to contribute? Um, what do you think? I mean, when I was looking through these ledgers, they were saying that they were directing them somewhere else. They weren't in kind of the dungeon where we were, where they were living in the barracks. Like, all of these supplies are being sent, I think, along this road into the Painted Valley. So if what you're looking for are the cultists, I'd say that's where they're gathered. Like I said, when we were in the dungeon, it didn't seem like an impressive number of cultists there. It was just sort of on autopilot while the the main group was gone, so far as I could tell. And maybe that was lucky for us because I don't know how well we would have fared against the entire cult if we had to try to break out of there. But I have a feeling that maybe that's where they are, in the Painted Valley, for some reason. I don't know why. Sounds like a good, good plan as anything to me. Yep. Well, at least know where they are. All right, well, I guess let's camp here for the night, and I... we can try to head out in the morning. Aye. Okay. And long rest. You can go ahead and mark your long rests, Sweet. and we'll pick up there next time we have next time we play. All right, hello everyone. Thank you for listening to our podcast or whatever that is. Share it with your buddy. All right, thank you.